כמה חיפשתי אותך ולא מצאתי כמה הלב אותך אהב כמה כאב וים דמעות ידעתי למרות הכל לא אמר אותי לא שלום 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 היי וואטס קוראון און וואטס קוראון און וואטס קוראון און מי נאמס מייקל סאנו אין וולקום 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 to this episode of the 12 Cities in Israel podcast, the super-duper positive podcast that tells you everything about Israel. Um, welcome. Hey, welcome to the show. This is episode 22. We are moving along. We're getting up there in numbers. And, uh, huh, so I have a choice. I have a choice. I have a choice. What can I do? What can I do? What can I do? I can do an episode on... All of the politics, um, all the election stuff, all the war stuff, all the balagan, the mess that is the news today, or, or I could do an episode about something incredibly important. And as you can probably tell, if you're watching the, uh, If you're watching the YouTube version of this, I am not serious at all. Um, we could do an episode on shopping. We, uh, or to be more specific, on Judaica, on the things that people get when they, uh, when they visit Israel. Uh, you know, the tchotchkes, the, uh, oh, if you're going, can you get me a fill in the blank? Um, First, uh, listen, hey, if this is your first time watching us on the video version of this podcast, please, please, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you're always in the loop and always know when we have a fresh, brand new episode out. Also, if you want to take us with you on your way to work or to the gym or wherever you're going, um, you can find this podcast on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Tune in and Spotify. And as you know, if you've been watching, um, I start off all of these episodes by giving a couple of shout outs to my sponsors. And we will start with Neviot. Neviot Plus flavored water. Nature at its best taste. Neviot Plus delivers you with a true combination of health and pleasure. Based on Neviot natural mineral water, one of its kind in Israel, it's enhanced with five, that's right, Chamesh B-group vitamins. It's naturally sweetened, it's low in calories, only 35 to 40 calories per eight fluid ounces. There are no preservatives, no color additives. It's available in delicious indulging flavors like apple, peach, which I have in my hand, grape, and grape, sorry. Apple, peach, and grape. So if you're in Israel, you should be drinking Neviot. For more information, please check out their website at www.neviotglobal.com forward slash en forward slash home. That's www.neviotglobal forward slash en forward slash home. Um, if you want to get this water, you can head on over to our next sponsor, uh, Makolet Online. And Makolet Online is an online store whose main goal is to make Israeli groceries and Judaic products affordable and available to everyone in the USA and in Canada. Their online store carries items that are unavailable in most places in North America, things like tahini, Israeli chocolates, frozen borekas, and the Neviat water that we have on the show today. At Makolet Online, you will find your favorite Israeli goods or simply enjoy brand new flavors. All of their products are kosher and most are manufactured in Israel. If you want the taste of Israel delivered to your home, visit www.makoletonline.com and order today. For an added bonus, guys, if you use the coupon code 12 cities in Israel, that's the number one, two, Cities in Israel, all one word, no spaces. Um, you'll receive 15% off of your entire purchase. I use it all the time. Uh, please, please use it. Let them know 
and support the support that business. Um, support this business. So again, visit www.macoletonline.com. That's www.macoletonline.com in order today. So uh, actually, something in that ad is really relevant to what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about tchotchkes, okay? We're not going to be talking about... Oh, before we go any further... I got to give a shout out to uh, Shauna Emily uh, from the last episode, episode 21, where I was talking about restaurants in Yafo. Um, I reached out to her on Instagram and messaged her and told her that I had linked the video and discussed the video um, on the podcast. She's so awesome. She's so sweet. Um, all right. So when you watch her videos... She's a super duper nice, um, gregarious. Is that the right word? Outgoing, just really fun, fun person. And, uh, she got right back to me and, uh, I shot her out a message back and I have to go into a little bit more detail. Her mom, um, was named Yafa, Yafa, I think was what she said. And she was born in Haifa and... Her mother passed away, so um, blessed memory. Um, so if 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 it's any indication by her children, she was a wonderful woman. But a big shout out to Shauna Emily, her sister, her dad, and all of them. Um, thanks a lot. So one of the things in her video that's pretty relevant is she goes mad shopping, just crazy shopping. They go into all these shops, all these stores, and 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 find all these really fun little uh some some clothes, you know, fashion, whatever. Um, it's not difficult to waste a lot of money. Not waste, blow a lot of money uh <laughs> on clothing while you're there. I got a ridiculous hat, um, which I love. Um, but regardless, um we the subject of today. Uh, today's podcast is on tchotchkes. A hey, Peter, 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 just for you, I'm going to have a sip of my Jacob's coffee. So before we get rolling, let me get a big, big gulp. That was a big slurp. I'm going to take another one. Hold on. Like I've been saying, I need to get a guest uh, in here soon. I I have the equipment. I just need the extra camera because I need someone to give me a break so I can keep drinking. <laughs> that sounded wrong. That sounded very wrong. Okay, so we're going to be talking about tchotchkes. Now, um, one of the things that it said in the ad, and why I said that the ad was uh, touched on a point that's important to what we're going to be talking about, is it said most of, uh, at Makolet Online, most of the things that they have are made in Israel. Now, for Jews, for a Jew, um, even for Christians, I'm pretty sure, from what I've seen, something from Israel, i.e. something from the Holy Land, has an added significance. Um, I'm going to talk about a couple of those items. I'm going to talk about a little bit about, in the beginning, Judaica. All right, so... Um, and I'm going to have to explain to those of you who don't know what Judaica is and why it's so important. So Judaica are the physical items that are related to um, the faith that is Judaism. So what do I mean by that? Because that, that, that's a big chunk to just out there. So it, it, it's funny because Judaica, in Judaism, we have a lot of things um, that are important to our daily Jewish life on the religious level. And uh, it, it's important. Judaica is and are religious objects. So now, I know some of you are going, well, I'm not religious, and I have X, Y, or Z. Well, 
Okay, I get that. And you have that for the cultural implications, the cultural relations uh, that they hold for you in terms of being Jewish. But on the whole, on the whole, in almost all cases, from what I can, from, from the research, and I did research on this, from the research, um, all Judaica is related to um, religious observance in some form or manner. Now it gets even deeper than that. So being a Jew, um, a religious Jew, actually, I wonder if it is just a religious Jew. I think it might be, but um, I'll just, being an observant Jew, we'll say that. So being an observant Jew, you have what are called mitzvot. Uh, mitzvot, ot being the plural of mitzvah. And I'm going to try to summarize what a mitzvah is because it's so much more than the simple description. Like a mitzvah is a law, but it's not a law. It's not a codified law. Like, I say not codified. Okay, so in Catholicism, you have what are called canon laws. I think I got this right. You have things that are canon laws, and they're set in stone, and you have to do them, okay? You have to do them, or I think you go to H-E-double-L. Uh, um, now, mitzvot don't have that ramification, that punishment associated with them. Um, they're... Uh, on the whole, they tend to be, and I'm going to try to be academic about this. On the whole, they tend to have more of a social ramification than a spiritual ramification. But, aha, here we go. The social ramification to a Jew at times can be as profound, tremendous, important as the spiritual, okay? So you'll have, you know, uh, like I have a friend. We just went through, um, what did we just go through? Yom Kippur. And my friend's secular. So she, uh, I just off the, I don't know why I asked. I asked. I'm observant, so I fasted for Yom Kippur. She, I asked her, I said, did you fast? She said, of course. No religious significance, but she feels compelled, social. So this Judaica, this, this uh, um, Judaica falls in line with what we see as social requirements for being Jewish. One of the big ones, um, and packed into that is if you can get that Judaica from Israel, from specifically, well, not not always too, but a lot of the times, if you can get that Judaica from Jerusalem, it holds greater import uh, within the heart, within uh, the the soul of the individual. I'll use an example of one of the uh, pieces of Judaica that I'm going to discuss today, and that is the mezuzah. So I don't know if a lot of you know about mezuzah, M mezuzot, I think that's right, right? I don't know. We'll find out. Someone will comment. Hey, jerk. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, they're, they're actually, the comments on this show are really great. I don't get that many negative ones, so I welcome any corrections, please. So I'm going to say mezuzot. So that would be the plural of mezuzahs. Um, now if you've ever been to a Jewish home or a Jewish space, a synagogue, um, they even have them at the Jewish museum in New York city on museum row. Um, you'll see these little boxes, probably about maybe half the size of a phone and they're on the right door frame, the top third of the door and a lot of times they're they're pointed in towards the 
inside. Um, and I'm going to tell you about them, and I'm going to tell you why they're tilted, and I'm going to tell you that not all of them are tilted. And uh, so inside, so the mezuzah is not the box. First, the mezuzah is not the little box that's affixed to the door. The mezuzah is actually a piece of parchment that goes inside, and it's written by a Torah scribe, a very special scribe who um, works on parchment, which is animal skin, um, treated animal skin, um, just like the parchment from uh, ancient times. And it's, it's, I mean, the recipe, all of it, it's all the same. Um, and it has uh, a, a piece of the, the Torah in it, and it's Deuteronomy. And it, the, the one that I know specifically is it's the Shema, and I'm not going to say it right now, but that's the, the, the prayer that we as Jews, it's our seminal prayer, um, hear us, O Lord, um, I, I know how to say it in Hebrew like that. Um, but actually I think I got it right here. What does it say? Um, here, O Israel, the Lord is our God. The Lord is one. So, um, that's what it says. And there's another scripture in there and there's also sometimes stuff on the back and a lot of times, um, but well, yeah, so that's what goes on the doorpost inside those little elongated cases. Now, on the outside of the case is what's called a shin, which is the letter, which is the sh or s sound. Um, and that is um, that has to do with one of the names of God, which I'm not going to say on because I don't want to upset some uh, interesting thing. Um for some Jews, writing the name of God or saying the name of God is forbidden except for in a, um, what do you call it, a prayer. So I'm not going to say it. But um, the shin goes on the outside. So a lot of times you'll see people, and I do this, um, I kiss my, my fingertips and then I press on the shin or on the mezuzah and say, Baruch Hashem. Um, I don't know if anyone else does that. Let me know if anyone else does that. But, um, yeah, so the case is what people see. Now, a lot of times what people, they'll come back from Israel and they'll say, hey, I got a mezuzah. I got mezuzahs for everyone. I got mezuzahs for every room in the house. Um, and what that does is, uh, there's a commandment to affix it above uh, uh, to the doorpost of every house. It's a mitzvah. It's a it's a uh, it's a commandment from God. It's something that God asks every Jew to do. Um, what's interesting is not just observant Jews do it. A what did I read? Something like two thirds of Jews. Or was it two thirds of Jews in Israel um, have a mezuzah on their house? Um, so, but now I said it's usually slanted inwards, and the reason for that little known fact is you want to let God enter your home. So that's why it's tilted. Um, now that is. Are you ready for this? Just an Ashkenazi custom, okay? So you, for those of you who don't know, there are different types of Jews. There are uh, Ashkenazi from Eastern Europe, Sephardi from North Africa, uh, Mizraki from, <coughs> from the Middle East. There's Beta Israel, which are Ethiopian Jews. There's um, Caucasus Jews. There's all different kinds of Jews. Mountain Jews. Um, and... All of them have different minhagim, which are customs. A minhag is Hebrew for custom. Um, now, the Sephardi and Mizraki Jews, theirs aren't tilted. Theirs just go up and down. Uh, don't know why. Don't know why. Um, but 
that's one of the things. And I, at, at the latter half, I'm going to talk to you about where you can get all this stuff, where um, you can find all these things. I just want to hit a couple more of these. Uh, I, I want to talk a little bit more about um, Judaica and its importance. So having a mezuzah or bringing a mezuzah, having a mezuzah in your home that you got at, um, I don't know, uh, Kmart. Um, I was going to say Bradley's. I don't think Bradley's is around anymore. Uh, getting one at Walmart is not the same. <laughs> I don't think they care in mezuzah, but getting one from the U S or Poland is not the same as getting one from Jerusalem or Israel. To me, I, yeah, maybe, I guess it depends. If it was a mezuzah from, you know, that's interesting. So Judaica holds special import for the individuals who have them. It's almost as if they are objects of art. They are pieces of time. So actually what I was just about to say um, exemplifies this. So let's say you were able to, somebody came to you and they said, I have a mezuzah from the Warsaw Ghetto. I would want that one in my home over one that was made in Jerusalem, you know, and sold in a, in a market. You know what I mean? It's, it's, there would be something to it. Having the mezuzah from, uh, David Ben-Gurion's house or having the mezuzah from Theodore Herzl's parents' home, you know, in, uh, in, oh man, come on, Budapest, um, would be to me more significant than having the one from, uh, you, you know, one that I just bought in the Chachki shop in Yafo. Okay. So, um, yeah. So Judaica holds import for individuals depending on what it means to them. Like I have a lot of things. Like I have, I, w one of the ones I have is, and the way I'm going to describe this in no way reflects the way I feel about it. I have this dinky plastic see-through one with a shin on it it was given to me by um dr roy middleman the head of the jewish studies program at city college of new york that i don't know where it was made it might have been made in the united states it might have been made in china um but that one means so much to me because of who gave it to me i have so much respect for him um and that's the interesting thing about Judaica. Like, uh, Judaica means tons of things. Like, it could be the candlesticks for Shabbat. Like, mine um, or your Kaddish cup. And I'll tell you, I have candlesticks from the Jewish Museum. And they're silver. I honestly don't think they're probably not the most sturdy, best made. They've fallen onto the floor a number of times. Um, thank you cats. Um, but they mean a lot to me because the Jewish museum was a place that I went with, uh, on a number of trips while I was at city college and the collection there means a lot to me. Um, so I could, you know, at any time get, uh, candlesticks, uh, Shabbat candlesticks, uh, all the times that I've been in, in Jerusalem, all the times I've been in Israel. Um, I have a Kaddish cup that has a, it's dented. Um, but I love it. It's got this beautiful rose on it. It's silver. I, I, it, it means a lot to me. All of my Judaica means a lot to me. I got, um, I have a, uh, what do I have? I have a um, menorah, not a Hanukkah. That's another thing. So, um, hold on. I'm going to take a step. So, 
at Hanukkah, we have what a lot of people call a menorah, and it's not. It's called, are you ready, a Hanukkiah, um, because it has two extra branches on it. Um, mine came from Bed Bath & Beyond, and the reason I love it is because I needed a new one, and I had nowhere to get it, and I was up in uh, the Hudson Valley in New York, not a super duper, uh, Jewish community. Um, there, there on my side of the river, there's not a lot. So, um, I, I, on a whim went into Bed Bath and Beyond and found it. And it, it means a lot to me. It's a beautiful one. I've had a lot of wonderful Hanukkahs with my son and my wife. And, and so I wouldn't replace it if you made me. I also have a menorah, um, which means a lot to me too. It was made in a bronze factory in Cholon, which is a city in Israel, uh, a bronze factory that doesn't exist anymore. So it's a piece of Jewish history. Um, and I guess it was a famous one, which begs the question, if it was so famous, why did it get shut down? Um, I don't know if I want to know the answer to that. Uh, but these are all examples of little things that people get when they're in Israel, important things that people get that mean a lot to them. Like I have a, I didn't know this, my grandmother went to Jerusalem. Um, I have a, oh, this is a good segue. I have a Hamsa letter opener. I didn't even play in this. Thank you, Josephine, my queen. My grandmother's name was, is Josephine. She passed away. Baruch Hashem for her in my life. She is wonder. She was wonderful. She's still my guidance. She's still my North Pole. Um, she is. Uh, I love her so much. Um, anyways, so uh, Hamsa's. Hamsas are something people get when they go to Israel. Um, and they are an integral part of Judaica. Holy cow. I actually, how many do I have? I have a lot. I bought my wife a lot. I've bought other people a ton of them. They're, they're the, if you get someone a Hamsa, and they're a Jew, um, they're like, what? I love it. They just get all bananas. They get Cracker Jack crazy. They love them. And I have to delve into Hamsas a little bit because I, I in my research, I was doing research on uh, Mezuzot and um, look at that. Just rolled off the tongue. Mezuzot. Um, and on other Judaica and I decided, and I found a really, I found a couple of really neat videos that I'm going to put in the, uh, in the description about that, that well define the relationship between, uh, the Hamsa and, uh, Judaism. So it's interesting because there are a lot of odd, what are we at? We are at, hold on one sec. All right, before I talk about the Hamsa, I'm going to go into my, uh, my shout outs for the second part because I really want to delve deep into the Hamsa. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Anyone who knows anything about Israel, anyone who knows anything about Judaism and being Jewish knows about Hamsas. So it's going to be a fun little journey. But first, let me tell you about iConnect. iConnect, engagement with Israel that earns you rewards. You can earn points and connect with Israel on iConnect with articles, games, quizzes, polls, and more. So what exactly is iConnect? Well, iConnect is a social gaming platform where you can play, earn points, and receive cool prizes all for free. Now, why would you want to play? Well, because iConnect introduces you 
Do a unique way to acquaint yourself with all things Israel while working towards winning once-in-a-lifetime experiences. So head on over to www.iconnect.co.il. That's www.iconnect.co.il and start playing now. I also want to tell you about Israel Phones. They are the leading provider of communications devices for people traveling to Israel. Israel Phones offer SIM cards, MiFi devices, which are mobile Wi-Fi hotspots, travel products, and it serves the connectivity needs of tour groups, synagogues, schools, community missions, study programs, and individuals, supplying you with international prepaid SIM cards, cell phones, and USB portable modem hotspot rentals, which... They're a lifesaver, guys. you got to get one if you're going to Israel. Right now, because of watching this show, Israel Phones will give you a free SIM card, which is a $15 value if you spend $30 or more on their site. All you have to do to get this deal is to use the coupon code 12 cities in Israel, the number one, two cities in Israel, just like the other one. All one word, no spaces when checking out on your next order. For more information on what Israel Phones can do for you, for more information on what Israel Phones can do for you, and to get this great deal, please visit www.israelphones.com. That is www.israelphones.com. I actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I have to order one of those. Um... I don't think just yet, though, because I'm not leaving till February. And right now it's October. So hold on. Let me take a sip, and then we're going to start talking about hamsas with a chet. Hold on. Actually, hiccup. That was nice. Actually, let me look. Yes, it is. It's hamsa. So... We're going to get a little squirrely here, and some people are probably going to get a little bit uncomfortable, which is okay. That's why you're here. No, that's actually the opposite of why you're here. Um, No, uh, it's just that the origins of the Hamsa are a little bit, how should we put this, pagan. So... There is, and and I don't know, I have to look at some of this research deeper um, because it appears that when they say in an academic paper that uh, use the open palm design. Now, all right, so you know, a chamsa is an open hand and chamsa is actually an Arabic word <clears throat> that's been brought into usage in, um, actually it was in usage. uh, So brought into Jewish usage and eventually into Hebrew, uh, the national language of Israel, uh, the language used in Israel. Um, so Hamsa is an Arabic word for five from what I said. I don't know. It could be actually mean something else, but it's, um, all the data that I read said explicitly that Hamsa means five in Arabic. The reason I made that caveat caveat before is because I don't speak Arabic. But what I do speak is Ivrit, Hebrew. Um, and Hamesh, Hamsa, Hamesh, Hamesh is five in Hebrew. Um, <clears throat> now, there are two depictions of, and the Hams, the Hamsa is found in all kinds of things. It's found in wall hangings. It's found in jewelry as a pendant. It's found in uh, bracelets, rings, earrings, uh, all, all over the place. I mean, you cannot walk five feet without, boom, running into a Hamsa if you're in Israel. Um, a lot of people wear them, uh, men and women both wear them. Um, you will find them in just about every home. Our home has one, two, three, 
four. We have another sort of clumsy thing. We have a glass eye without the hand. Um, what else? Probably, probably more. I don't know. Um, uh, we have a bunch for jewelry that I bought my wife. Um, I don't have a necklace. I might have bought my mom a necklace, but point is, chamsas are everywhere. Now, there, from what I read, there are two different meanings. There are up, which is to God, and there's down, which is blessings from God. Um, there is the story that it is meant to ward off the evil eye. Ooh. That actually is where the pagan aspect comes from it. And it goes all the way back. There are a couple of different, and this is where it gets interesting. This is, this is, this is kind of neat because there are a bunch of different religions, ancient religions, that had a depiction of a five-fingered hand. All right. Um, and what's interesting about it is, if you think about it, give them the hand, stop, don't want to hear anymore, is the modern-day equivalent of the ancient world equivalent of blocking bad spirits. Okay. Um, so you have... Was it, I, you are, let's go all the way back. So you have the cult of Ishtar, which is all the way back to Mesopotamia, which pretty interesting because where did Abraham, Abraham come from? He came from, a lot of people don't know this. I tell people this and they're like, what? Abraham came from Ur which is near modern-day Babylon, or near modern-day uh, Baghdad. It's where Babylon was, um, I think. I mean, when I say was, I mean geographically was. I don't mean like it was next door and they had gardens next to each other. The Hanging Gardens of Babylon didn't even plan that. Um, but, so, it would make sense that a developing Jewish uh, religion would bring um, would bring things with it. Take take for example in the uh, the um, Epic of Gilgamesh, the uh, the flood story um, was brought into the Torah as Noah. You know what I mean? So th this this um, what is it? This social history that that people bring with them carry along with them would have would theoretically i mean this is all theory would have brought the Hamsa out of babylon into the land of canaan so um you also have what is it you have in egypt you have osiris and isis i think or Horus, Horus and Osiris were the thumbs, or Isis and Horus were the thumbs, or something like that. But that same motif existed in uh, existed in Egypt. Interesting, interesting, inter interesting. I can't even say that word. Interestingly, um, and this is gonna either shock you or make you go, wow, holy cow, I never thought of it that way. So, <laughs> excuse me, Moses, Moshe, um, I guess, and it was explained to me, I don't have any veracity. I don't know if there's any veracity to this. This was explained to me when I was in college. If it's wrong, let me know I'm wrong. But Moses was an Egyptian name. Moses, Ramses, all of that. So the ES is indicative that it was um, an Egyptian name. Um, he grew up in the palace, so that would kind of make sense. So, but think about that. So the Israelites are leaving. The slaves are leaving Egypt. What do they bring with them? Some customs. Absolutely. Totally see it. Um, so there is all that, but all that's suppositional, and it's based on... 
Um, archaeological evidence that they found things similar. Okay. So, one more sip. Hold on. I'm in the mood for coffee today. So, guess where, and this is one of the thoughts about, uh, and I should look into this. This is actually pretty interesting. Get someone to talk to about this. So, there are some thoughts about how the Hamsa became so prevalent in Israel, modern day Israel. I heard an interesting fact the other day that of the groups, specific groups, I mean specific groups from specific places. So Ashkenazim are a bunch of different groups of people. They're Poles, Germans, uh, Lithuanians, Ukrainians, Russians, uh, all different kinds of of uh, from all different uh nationalities national areas there you go um so ashkenazi make up 50 percent of the people but of people from individual places no ashkenazi group makes up the majority the majority from an individual place in Israel are, are you ready for this? And I want to, I got to double check this with the source, uh, but I'm going to throw it out there because who cares? It's my podcast. <laughs> are Moroccans, Morokai, um, and my family, my father's, my last name is Sano, but I was uh, adopted by my father. Love you, dad. Um, my birth father, his last name was Verver, uh, which is Spanish, uh, which is um, Berber. I'm a Moroccan roots, baby. Um, so the reason I bring that up is because there is a thought that it comes from two places, Tunisia and Morocco. And what's interesting is there was a lot of back and forth movement in the in the Jewish community, from what I understand. It could be wrong, but from what I understand, from the reading that I did. Um, and I do have an expert that I can lean on about this. Um, but apparently the Hamsa can be found all over Morocco, current day. Um, so... If you have a large movement of Moroccan Jews to the brand new state of Israel, what are they going to bring with them? You got it. Hamsas. And what does everyone love? Moroccans. Because we're great. We're fun. And we have good food. Um, but I didn't grow up with that food. That's that's the sad part. But the happy part is I get to be a part of it now. Um, but that is the reason why Hamsas are so prevalent in Israel and all over the place. There are, and I found in, in the research that I did, that there are Hamsas in Ashkenazi culture. Um, there were representations. I don't know how it got there. They couldn't, they actually said it's not known how it got there. Uh, but I find that fascinating. Um, tchotchkes, I love tchotchkes. Oh, I love chamsas too. And my wife always goes, not not bananas in a bad way, but just like, oh my gosh, you came home with more chamsas. Well, I got one for Kraka. I got one for Middleman. I got one for Tara Wasserman. Shani always gets a, and that's the thing. It's funny because every time I come back, I uh, always made it a point to give all of the, um, I don't know. That's so weird. I never thought of it that way. I always give the women in the, uh, in, well, I know exactly why. I always give the women in the Jewish studies department um, gifts. And the reason for that is because they have instilled so much in me. Uh, in, in, more than in terms of a degree. They've given me 
just, they've all become my sisters. They've become family, and I love every single one of them. Um, so yeah, I give family gifts. I give a lot of people gifts. I my wife says it drives her nuts, but whatever. Who cares? She gets gifts too. Yeah, it drives her nuts until she winds up getting gifts, and she's like, "Oh, really? Can I?" Uh? So another thing, and this is another tchotchke thing that is very super duper 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 important and i'm gonna give you this is the super super secret if you want to come back from israel with the best best gift best gift ever 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 come back with silk scarves I'm going to tell you, this is one of the things I didn't even think about doing this. So there's a couple of different shooks, and here's where I'm going to start telling you about where you can get this stuff. So there are different markets. There's the market in the old city in Jerusalem. There is a number of markets, a number of stores, but there's a market at the top right by the square in Yafo, right next to a barrage. I love you, barrage. They have the mixed grill. I'm sorry, can't talk about Yafo without talking about food. Uh, <laughs> you can go to the Carmel Market. They have them there. Scarves. But the best place that I've found to get scarves, this is my secret hack. Are you guys ready? The best, best place to get scarves is in Beersheba in the open air market in the Shook. They have the absolute best scarves. I, I come back with them all the time. And the thing is, you will get robbed in the old city in Jerusalem. Um, they will be very expensive. Uh, you can usually get them down. Like the biggest trick with the with with buying things there is just being like, oh yeah, no, sorry, and then just walk away, and whoa, 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 whoa. and they will scream for you to come back. Um, and you can usually get that usually knock the price down fifty percent, or tell them you're just gonna go to like ah, uh, I'll just get them in the Carmel Market. Don't worry about it. Um, but rather than do that and go through all that haggling, which I don't know, might be fun. Um, you can get them in, uh, you can get them in Carmel Market in Tel Aviv. You can get them in Beresheva. You can get them in the Shuk in, uh, in, uh, in Haifa. You can go up to Akko and you can get them everywhere. But that is the single best gift. They come in these beautiful, rich colors, these blues, reds. Every time I come back with one, people are like, Ooh, this is awesome. Um, now, all of these places that I just mentioned are also places where you can pick up the rest of your tchotchkes. Um, now, I will tell you, I will tell you, one of the best chamsas that I bought for anyone was for, um, was for Bigash, my partner in making the travel show. I wound up going to Beersheba. And we were at, are you ready for this? We were at the mall. And I think it was 15 bucks US. Maybe even less. But it was one of the most beautiful onyx hamsas. It was silver on the outside with onyx inlay. And uh, it, it literally, I bought it and stuff was like, oh my gosh, that's so nice. How much is that? And I, I told her how much it was. And she was like, oh yeah, you got to get it for her. She'll love it. And uh yeah, so you can find you can find good deals, you can find tchotchkes, you can find Judaica just about everywhere. If you go to the Shook, there's always going to be a um a number of what do you call it? A number of stalls that have uh different kinds of Judaica. They're going to have your Shabbat candlesticks, they're going to have Kiddush cups. They're going to have everything. Um, and the thing I love, though, my... F All right, so there is something else. There is another piece of Judaica that um, is important, and I'm wearing it, and it's my kippah. 
and I get my kippahs from a guy on eBay who gets them from Israel. Um, they're the best. They're absolutely the best. The other place that I get them is from this one. Um, it's so funny. This place is a like literally a hole in the wall with Judaica crammed in it. It's run by this Orthodox gentleman. And uh, it's in Better Sheva. It's over by uh, this place where I go for shawarma. It's over by the grocery store I go to. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, you can find it everywhere. Look for it. Get it. Um, and if you go to Israel, can't leave without it. One tip, though. Last tip. Last tip. Last tip. Don't buy it in the airport. They sucker you in the airport. And this is how they do it. And I don't blame the people who are working at this store, but the people who run the store, come on, guys. Um, all of the prices, it's really kind of a crappy thing. And I got roped into this and suckered into this the last time. And I was not happy. Uh, so you're used to using shekels when you're in Israel. And the numbers are different. And it's about a third of what the normal U.S. price is. So you gauge that when you're pricing things. All of the prices in the Judaica store, in the airport, in the departures, are in U.S. dollars. And it doesn't say that. It just says numbers. So you get up to the counter and you put all of this stuff, some of, the, some of it's great stuff. You put it all onto the counter. And I wound up spending $400. A bunch of dirt bags. Um, but... I will say, <laughs> for 400 bucks, I was happy with everything I got. And everyone else was happy with what they got. Um, all right, that's that's pretty much it. Um, tchotchkes, Judaica, get some. And, uh, hey, that's totally worth the trip to Israel. All right? Um, all right, so let me uh, wrap this up by telling you about what we're doing in February. I'm going back where I will be getting more tchotchkes most likely. Um, so this coming February, this show, the 12 Cities in Israel podcast, um, will be in Tel Aviv at the C Executive Suites to do interviews with a number of people from across Israeli society. We have a number of wonderful people confirmed as guests, including Daron Almog from Ale, Rivka Karmi, the former president of Ben Gurion University, um, Knesset member MK Stav Shafir, that's the uh, Israeli parliament. She's a member. Um, Daniel Seaman uh, and Yishai Fleischer, who are both... Um, well, Daniel Seaman is a journalist who was also the communications director for the first Netanyahu administration. Um, Yishai Fleischer is a uh, uh, podcaster, and he is also the spokesperson for the Jewish community in Hebron. Uh, Tomer Yosef, the lead singer of Balkan Beatbox. DJ Aviel Brandt. Corey Gil Schuster, who is from uh, Ask a Palestinian, Ask an Arab Project. Um, Sarah Tuttle Singer and Shoshana Keats Jaskal, who are both bloggers and journalists for the Times of Israel. Really psyched about them. And uh, many others, including a couple of friends of mine, one who is a professional dancer and ballerina, um, and another one who is a professional artist and uses her art to educate. Um, in total, we will be interviewing about 22 to 24 people who represent some of the best of Israel creatively, professionally, and academically. These really are some of the most amazing people. Um, and this project has the very real potential to have a profound impact outside of Israel on a number of different spectrums, uh, from the political to the social, meaning that this, this project could be the catalyst to the world. A lot of people in the world seeing Israel in a more positive light. Um, I would like for your help uh, and for you to be a part of this, so please visit our website, www.12citiesinisrael.com and make a donation through PayPal toward helping us fund our trip. Um, before I was saying $5,000, we're now down to around $4,000 because I 
Uh, I, I was actually going to do it today, buy my ticket, but I couldn't get a hold of anyone. Um, I have to call them back. Um, but I need it for, um, I need it for the space. I need it for the lighting rentals, uh, while we're overseas, uh, while we're in Tel Aviv, because I can't bring this stuff with us. I can bring our equipment, but I can't bring these and I need it for a second camera and a couple of, uh, a couple of tripods, um, and yeah, please. So we really, really, really need your help. Um, anything more that I get um, will go towards paying someone to come along with me. I'm doing this all on my own. Um, it would be wonderful to have one uh, staff member there who could help me and meet our guests and help out with setup and everything. But as it stands right now, it's just going to be me and I'm not taking any any pay for this. Uh, for me, the payment is doing this. So, um, yeah, I really need your help and I'd really like it if you would go to our website and do anything that you could, please. Um, all right. Thank you so much for joining us for the 12 cities in Israel podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to our feed and become a part of the 12 cities in Israel community. You can find this podcast on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, and Spotify. And we'll be bringing you a brand new podcast every week. So keep your eyes out for it. Also, to help support this podcast, you can visit our Patreon page and become a regular donor. You can find that page at www.patreon.com forward slash 12 cities in Israel. And again, it's It's the same as the code that I gave. It's the number one, two cities in Israel. So it's www.patreon.com forward slash 12 cities in Israel. Um, Also, please visit our YouTube channel where you can see a video version of this podcast plus other videos that we've produced, including our full length travel episode on the city of Beersheba in southern Israel. While you're there, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. You can also check us out at our website, www.12citiesinisrael.com, on our Facebook page, and on Instagram, where every day we post, or at least we try to post, a brand new picture from our trips, our visits to Israel. All right, that's it. Yalla, 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 yalla